Hi, it's Layla, and I'm back for my final video in this little series that I've been doing. So Me and White Supremacy, my debut book, comes out in just a few days time. And what I have been doing is giving you all an inside look into the new book. So very brief history rerun. We started, Me and White Supremacy started as an Instagram challenge in the summer of 2018. It then became this book, the Me and White Supremacy workbook, which was downloaded by 100,000 people and is now going to be uh, in bookstores and in um, spaces and places around the world as this book. This is the UK version. This is the US version. So the UK version is published by Quirkus, the US version by Sourcebooks. And it's, it, it, it's, it's been an incredible journey. It's been such an incredible journey to take the book from original inception as this Instagram challenge to now this traditionally published uh, hardcover book that's going to be a, a, around the world. Um, so what I wanted to be able to do is to give you all a little insight, a little behind the scenes so that you can get some insight into what you're going to be getting when once you get your book. So as I said, this is the fourth video that I've done. I've done the, f the first video was just a brief overview of the book um, and about week one, which was all about the basics. Week two was about anti-blackness, uh, racist uh, stereotypes and cultural appropriation. Week three was about allyship. And now week four, which is the final seven days, is about power, relationships and commitments. So that's day 22 to day 28. So I'm going to talk, what I'm going to be doing today is a little bit different. I'm going to still explain what this week is about, give you a little reading from the book. But then I'm also going to be just telling you what comes after the 28 days. There's a, there's a section after the 28 days are over that will help to support you as you continue on your journey. So week four, power, relationships and commitments. And I say in our final week together, we look at your relationships with other people with white privilege, as well as your personal values and your commitments to anti-racism. And this week is actually slightly different from the other weeks, week one, two, three, and four, uh, one, two, one, two, and three. Week four is different. Um, and that's because, you know, I say that um, less explanation is needed about a lot of the days uh, in this week um, because more emphasis is being placed on reflecting on your relationships with other people and reflecting on your own commitments going forward. So, this this week is really about sort of bringing it home, right? We started with the basics to give you that foundational understanding. We then ran into the real meat, the sort of what racism actually looks like that we're familiar with. Then we looked at allyship and how what gets in the way of that and things that you think are the right thing to do, but actually um, get in the way of you showing up as an ally. And then we really bring it home because this is this is a book that people are really doing personally. Um, it's it's a personal uh, it's a personal self reflection exercise. How does what is me my relationship with white supremacy? How does this show up for me? But when we come to week four, you've got to you've got to go out into the world now. You've you've learned a lot as you've uh, gone through so far the first three weeks. A lot has come up for you. A lot of changes are happening within you, and you're beginning to make changes in your life. That's going to impact the people that you interact with in your life. And so that's why we talk about things like, how do you, how does that impact your friend, your relationship with your friends, with your family and the people around you? Um, so the, the, this week we look at um, white feminism. We look at white leaders, which is the day I'm going to be reading from today. We look at your friends. We look at your family. We look at your values. We look at losing privilege. And then the final day, day 28, we look at your commitments and making commitments to continuing this work beyond the 28 days. So let's, uh, today we're reading from, as I said, from White Leaders, which is day 23. Um, and this is, um, this is about when, when I talk about white leaders, I just want to define what I'm talking about here. So um, I say, um, where is it? 
So here we go. Today we're looking at you and white leaders specifically, people with white privilege in positions of leadership, authority, and power who you come into contact with. Examples of leaders include teachers, coaches, mentors, authors, speakers, public figures, management at your work or other institutions, worship leaders, community leaders, project leaders, politicians, and so on. So anybody who is in a position of leadership, it's not just the politicians, it's anybody who, whether directly or with more distance, you interact with who is in a position of leadership. It also includes yourself, if you are in a leadership position, and your peers who might be in leadership positions too. So what I'm gonna to do to, in today's reading is I'm going to read about why do you need to look at your relationship with white leaders? And then I'm gonna read some of the questions, some of the um, reflective journaling prompts so that you can get an idea of how that goes as well. Okay, why do you need to look at your relationship with white leaders? People with white privilege who are in positions of leadership have a great deal of responsibility. In addition to the white privilege that they already hold, they also have the ability to have a greater impact on how BIPOC, Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color are treated because their voice carries more weight and their authority means that they sometimes have the ability to create or influence policies and practices. Also, whether right or wrong, we often look to people in positions of leadership as role models of how to be in the world. However, we can also ask our leaders to do better. When it becomes clear to leaders that their audience, employees, community members, and voters are insisting on change, then they will have no choice but to do the very work that you are doing right now. But if everyone stays quiet, then nothing changes. The more you do your own anti-racism work, the more you can influence white leaders to do their own work too. And the more that they do their own anti-racism work, the more they will influence other people with white privilege to do their work too. Reflective journaling prompts. One, knowing what you now know about white supremacist behaviors across, day 20, across days one to 22, how do you respond when you witness white leaders behaving in these white supremacist ways? A, when white leaders tone police BIPOC, when white leaders claim colorblindness, when white leaders are when white leaders use anti-black tropes or racist stereotypes, when white leaders practice cultural appropriation, when white leaders practice optical allyship and white saviorism. B, when you have witnessed white leaders practicing these behaviors, how does your own white fragility and white silence get in the way of you asking them to do better? So obviously, having been through, as I say at the beginning of the question, having been through 20 to 22 days of this work, you're in a much better position to be able to answer these questions because you've really examined what are these concepts? How do they show up? How do I practice them? You, you st you're thinking a lot more critically and you're also being a lot more honest with yourself about what gets in the way of you being able to show up for, um, for people of color. Question two, how does your fear of loss of privilege and comfort hold you back from asking white leaders to do better? Question three, how aware have you been of whether white leaders you follow are doing deeper anti-racism work? How much of a priority has it been for you for them to go beyond the visual effect of, of diversity? So oftentimes we see the look of diversity through companies and, the, and you know, what white leaders are doing. Have you just accepted that as enough? Or now having done this work, do you understand it needs to go much deeper than that? And how much of a priority are you making it that if this is someone that I'm investing my time and money with, that I'm voting for, that I'm buying their services or products, that I'm invested in in some way, am I making it a priority for me that they should be doing deeper work around anti-racism? And if I'm not, then what does that say? Question four, if it is you who is in the leadership position, how do you plan to respond to your own behaviors going forward? How do you plan to hold yourself accountable to doing better? 
So that was You and White Leaders from uh, week four of Me and White Supremacy. So I said at the end of, of this video, I'm going to be walking you through the end of the book. So after the um, 28 days are over, something that I know that you will have realized is this isn't just a 28 day challenge that that anti-racism isn't a 28 day challenge that it's not enough to do the 28 days and then just say okay that's it I got my certificate of anti-racism I am now anti-racist that isn't how this works and you might get that now theoretically but when you do the work you'll realize it on an even deeper level that this is lifelong work so after the 28 days are over I talk about now what how to continue the work after after day 28. And I give some um, tips for to help you um, to continue the work. And, and I talk a little bit about taking the work from the personal to the systemic, right? Because oftentimes people who wanna create change, they look out into the world and they see this is a problem. So let's go attack the system. Let's go solve, let's just make changes to the policy. Let's just make changes to the practice. Okay, we didn't have enough uh, people in this advert um, who were people of color, we'll just add more people of color in and that will solve racism, right? Um, what this work will, will show you is no, deep work needs to happen within first before we make any sort of superficial changes to how things look, before any knee-jerk reactions, we really need to take this internally. When you take the work internally through doing a process such as mean white supremacy, you're in a much better position to then be able to create systemic change, institutional change that is real, that is considered, that does not center whiteness, that um, uh, th that takes the leadership, follows the leadership of black people, indigenous people and people of color. Um, and that really helps create real change and not just a superficial uh, change. So talk about that and then in the final um, parts of the book, there's an appendix on using the Circle Way, a process, a, a book um, that will help you if you want to do the if you want to do the book in groups. So, sort of rewinding, when I first started the Instagram challenge, I could not have predicted that we would that I would be sitting here today with these books. I, I couldn't have predicted it. It was it was a challenge that started out of my curiosity for, I've been talking about anti-racism for about a year now on my platform. People seem to be much more open to these ideas. I wonder what they have learned about themselves and white supremacy in this time. That's where it started from. Now we have, you know, we did the challenge, then it became the workbook, and now we have this book. And it, when I was writing the workbook, one of the questions that came up a number of times is, will you be including instructions for how to do this work in groups? Because what I hadn't anticipated was that people would take the work, be excited for the book and say, I want to take this to my book club. I want to do this with my family and my friends. I want to take this into my, my workplace. I want to take this into my school, my university, my college. And that is what's happened. The book has this work has gone beyond just an individual exercise um, to something where major corporate major corporations are interacting with the work, big universities are interacting with the work, and so it was very important for me to include a process in the book um, from the very big from from this book actually from early on that had a process that I believed in, that I trusted, that I felt w was a good fit for this kind of work. Um, uh, for how to do how to do mean white supremacy in a group. So the process that I selected and that I recommend, that I highly recommend, is a process called the Circle Way. Um, very briefly, the Circle Way is a structure for deep conversation and wise outcomes based on a methodology founded by Christina Baldwin and Anne Linnea in 1992. And they fully expound upon it in their 2010 book, The Circle Way, a leader in every chair. I'm not going to go too much into what this process is, why I use it, what it, you know, because I do that in in the appendix. Um, and there's also I not only share what the process is, but I also share it from the perspective of what you need to think about 
when using that process to do this work in particular. Um, and I also have some FAQs in that section as well. So there's a whole appendix in there about that. And then the f and then there's a resources or a, a there's a resources section that has a glossary of terms which you can use. Um, you can refer to any time basically. A lot of the concepts that we use in the book may be new to you. So there's a glossary in there for you. And then the very last section is a, a section on further learning. And what I've included there, I've, I, I talk about anti-racism is a lifelong practice that requires constant and consistent self-education. Below is a non-exhaustive list of resources and teachers who can support you on your journey. And we have an incredible list of books, podcasts, and films and documentaries in there that can support you in this lifelong journey of anti-racism. So that's it. That's me and white supremacy. The outline, the overview, some readings. Um, I'm excited to share this book with you. Um, thank you for, for those of you who, you know, are really supporting, sharing about it. It means so much to me. And I hope that this is getting you excited for what's coming is when you receive your book. So my final invitation and request and ask of you is please pre-order the book. Pre-ordering is a great help to authors. It allows us to reach even more people with our work, absolutely, um, but it also really helps us in hitting those lists. So bestseller lists and things of that nature, getting this work in front of as many people and getting it as big as, as possible is really important to me because the world is, 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 is in a state and white supremacy is the root for so many of our problems. And when I, when I first started writing about race, I started um, in 2017 after the Charlottesville um, uh, protests, I wrote a, an article called, I need to talk to spiritual white women about white supremacy. That initiated me into this public conversation about race, but I was, it was hard. It was so, so hard. And I really had lost faith. I'd really lost I, I was burnt out. I couldn't understand. It seemed like it was this big thing and there was nothing that I could do about it. And then this gift came to me for me. And this isn't the answer to anti-racism, but it's my answer. This is the way that I choose to show up. This is the contribution that I have to the work that so many people around the world ha are doing right now and have been doing throughout history to dismantle this thing that we call white supremacy. So this is my contribution to this work. And I really, it, it is my mission to get it in front of as many people as possible and to get as many people as possible engaged in the work so that we can create a better world. I believe in this process. I have seen the impact that it has on people and on organizations. I know that it's an important contribution to this movement um, in anti-racism. And I, it's, I really, whether you engage with my work or someone else's work, whatever it is, get involved, right? Um, but this is my this is my contribution, and I really appreciate any support that you can give with it. So, pre-order uh, meandwhitesupremacybook.com. The link is in my bio. Share it with your friends if you're interested in bulk orders um, because you want to do it in a group, like I talked about with the Me and White Supremacy Book Circle, just get in touch with me, send me a DM um, or send an email through my website. Um, help me, help me to help the world um, and help me to become a good ancestor and to help as many people as possible become good ancestors too. Thank you so much.